Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ama ba'd Continuing on in our treaties Aqidat al-Wasatiya by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah Rahimahullah ta'ala We reached the portion of the treaties where Shaykh al-Islam mentioned from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam those a hadith that are sound authentic hadith which are evidence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's divine names and attributes he mentioned some of them so in the beginning of his treatise Rahimahullah Ta'ala he mentioned much he, he mentioned from the Quran he mentioned ayats because Ahlul Sunnah this makes clear for us the minhaj of Ahlul Sunnah is that as dalil, as evidence, they take from the Qur'an, which is the Kitabillah, which is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the divine speech, which is perfect, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that which is authenticated on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that those are the nusus, those are the text, and those, that is the master of Islam, that is the source of Islam, in accordance with the fahm, or the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih, the Salaf of this Ummah, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, which begins with the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. So Shaykh al-Islam, after speaking ex extensively, and what bears witness to this is the last 29 durus that we've had, 29 sittings in studying these books, were all from verses of the Qur'an. They were all from the verses that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, uh, used as evidence to affirm what Allah affirms about Himself in the Quran and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates about Himself in the Quran. And this is the minhaj and methodology of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. As you will see in contradiction to this, and we will try to get into some of the, uh, the aqidah or beliefs and creed of some of the other groups who differ with Ahl Sunnah and how they deduce what is uh, the attributes, divine attributes and names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, the Jahmiya, who negated, or the Kulabiya, or the Mu'tazila, or the uh, Ashaira, or the Matridiya. All of these groups, in various ways or forms, practice a type of Ilhad, as we mentioned of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes. They negate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has affirmed for himself, either through total negation, or negating some of the meanings, or negating and change by changing the meanings. They distort the meanings to fit their intellect, and they use their intellect as a base for their iman. Whereas Ahlul Sunnah use, uses the Qur'an, and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi as a base for their Iman. Our faith is based upon the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala explains about the believers in Surah Al-Baqarah, Alif Lam Mim, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابَ لَرَيْبَ فِي هُدِنْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ أَلَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِمَّا رَزَقَنَهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says after Alif, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif Lam Mim, ذلك الكتاب الله ريب فيه that this is a book in which there is no doubt uh, contained in it there's no doubt about its authenticity ذلك الكتاب الله ريب فيه هدى للمتقين and it's a guidance for the people who fear Allah subhanahu wa taala those who are God consciousness those who are God fearful those who fear, uh, who practice the commands of Allah subhanahu wa taala and stay away from those things which Allah subhanahu wa taala has prohibited Hudin lil muttaqin alladina yu'minun bil ghaib. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes who they are. Alladina yu'minun bil ghaib. They are the ones who believe in the unseen. Because we've never seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We only know his divine names and attributes, who he is. His sifat dhatiyah or his sifat fi'liyah. We only know these from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is how we know it. So, that gives us evidence. That ayat right there illustrates for us the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah and the minhaj of the believers. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it, Allah said it, I didn't say it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Fi kitabi al-kareem, 
ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين it's a guidance for the muttaqin and then he described who they are الذين يؤمنون بالغيب those who believe in the غيب those who believe in the unseen not those who take their intellect and then try to use the nusus to substantiate their intellect no but rather ahl sunnah they go to the nusus kitab wa sunnah they take their belief from the quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then their intellect comes into play within the hudud of the sharia within the hudud of the methodology of the salaf al-sari radiyallahu ta'ala anhum majma'in shaykh al-islam in this portion of the treatise he said faslun فَالسُنَّةُ تُفَسِّرُ الْقُرْآنَ وَتُبَيِّنُهُ وَتُدُلُّ عَلَيْهِ وَتُعَبِّرُ عَنْهُ وَمَا وَصَفَ الرَّسُولُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ بِهِ رَبُّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ مِنَ الْأَحَادِيثِ الصِّحَاحِ الَّتِي تَلَقَّاهَا أَهْلُ الْمَعْرِفَةِ بِالْقَبُولِ وَوَجَبَ الْإِيمَانُ بِهَا Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala said, Faslun, he said basically the, the section or the chapter in the book, Fasunnah to tufassir al-Qur'an, he said that the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it explains the Qur'an, this is the minhaj, this also makes clear for us the methodology of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, is that we use, uh, we understand the Qur'an from the Qur'an, meaning some verses, they explain other verses. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنْ وَآيَاتِ الْمُحْكَمَاتُ وَأُخْرَ مُتَشَابِهَاتِ That there's some verses that uh, uh, are, are resemble one another, or that they might have some ambiguity to them, that they have many, more than one meaning, or they require further explanation. وَمِنْ مُحْكَمَاتِ And there are verses that are clear. Those verses were the ahkam, the rulings and the obligations are very clear and the rulings that are derived from them is very clear for us. So we use the Qur'an to explain the Qur'an. And then we use the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to explain the Qur'an. And then we go to the uh, understanding of the Sahaba to Rasul ﷺ and the tabi'een wa tabi'a tabi'een. And this is our minhaj for for uh, understanding the Qur'an, understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes. So Shaykh al-Islam said, فَسُنَّةُ تُفَسُّرُ الْقُرْآنِ وَتُبَيِّنُهُ وَتُدُلُّ عَلَيْهِ وَتُعَبْرُ عَنْهُ So he said the sunnah, it explains the Qur'an, it makes it clear, and it is, uh, it is, uh, the, it expounds upon the Qur'an, and, it clarifies or uh, even goes into more depth in, uh, with, with those verses and the understanding. This is what the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is for us. It is an explanation on how to practice the Qur'an. As Aisha anha, she said that the Prophet ﷺ, that when you wanted to know about the manners of the Prophet ﷺ, look at the Qur'an. So if you want to know and understand the Qur'an, then you look to the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, look to his manners, look to his values, look at how he practiced, look at his and how he interacted with others. That is the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and that's the example for us uh, in the Qur'an, and that expounds and explains for us the Qur'an, the Kitab In addition to that, as Shaykh al-Islam said, وَمَا وَصَفَ رَسُولُهُ uh, رَسُولُ بِهِ رَبُّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ مِنَ الْأَحَدِيثَ الصِّحَاحِ So he said, also, with regards to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, is that it, it, uh, that the Prophet ﷺ, he, uh, described, or his, his, uh, description of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sifat, this is how we know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, we know him from the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi his description that came in authentic hadith, his description of his Lord, Azza wa Jal, from the sound hadith, which were collected 
by the people, uh, Ahl Hadith, the people who know Hadith, the people, the narrators of Hadith, the people who busy themselves with Jarwa Ta'adil, with knowing the narrators of the Hadith and the authenticity of the narration, its synod, its chain of narration, and the people in that, uh, that, that chain, and the various chains of narration. These people, Ahl Ma'rifa, the people who have knowledge in this, and determined that these were authentic Hadith, and these Hadith are accepted by them. Those are the Hadith that we practice and understand who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in addition to the Qur'an. And that is from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Shaykh al-Islam said, Wajiba iman biha kathalik. And he said it is an obligation to have iman in that likewise. Meaning iman in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and iman in those attributes that the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi expounded upon and explained for us in, the, in uh, his authentic sunnah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that this is how we know who Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is and we're going to get into those some specific details very soon in the next uh, couple of uh, lectures or durus because we'll mention for example the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in uh, authentic hadith he said Yanzilu Rabbana Tabaraku Ta'ala Kulu Thuluth Layla Akhir he said uh, he said, Our Lord, the glorious and majestic, descends to the lowest heaven every last third of the night. So we believe what? This explains for us the sifat or the sifa of Nazul, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attribute. We don't negate it. We don't distort its meaning. We don't say it probably means this. It probably means power. It probably means light. It probably means mercy. It probably means this. No. But we go with the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We take his expl explanation on the zahir, on what it means, what is apparent, and what is clear. We take that from the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what the Quran, what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says about himself in the Quran. We accept that. Ahlul Sunnah Taslim. We, we, we accept and our Iman is based upon that. It's based on Kitabullah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not based on our intellect saying, hmm, that sounds like that resembles something of his creatures because people descend. People descend from mountains. People descend from horses. People descend from their riding bees. People get out of their, descend out of their high cars. They descend down the steps. No. That is false ta'wil. That is trying to make a similitude between Allah and his creation. And Ahl Sunnah is free from that and far from that because Allah gave us this qaida. Allah gave us this principle. Call Allah Ta'ala fi kitabihi al kareem. Laysa kamithlihi shayin wa huwa sami'un basir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, there is none comparable to him. We can't compare Allah to his creation or his creation to him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa huwa sami'un basir. And he is the all hearing, the all seeing. So Allah affirms for us that he has divine attributes. He is the complete perfect attribute of seeing and hearing, but it's not like his creation. Nor is our hearing and seeing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's. Although we hear and see, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears and see, but there's no comparison between our sight, which is limited and imperfect, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's perfect, uh, perfect attribute, uh, his perfect attributes of seeing and hearing. So there's no comparison. Ahl Sunnah does not make tashbih. But the people of innovation, they try to claim and distort the nasus and they distort the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah to even make declarations of kufr, of takfir upon Ahl Sunnah or accuse Ahl Sunnah of being the mujassimah or accuse Ahl Sunnah of being uh, mutashabihin or those people who make resemblance between Allah. But we just negated that for you. And we just negated that from the Qur'an, because that's what we believe. And we just negated for you that we don't say Allah, uh, you know, is a complete body and the law is like this and this, but we just affirm what Allah affirms about Himself and what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa affirms about Him. So that shows us, that's a refutation of those Ahbash and those other people who distort and lie about Ahl Sunnah, they lie and they make takfir of Ahl Sunnah. They accuse Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, who is far from their distorted, false lies. Uh, they, they lie about him. Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroy their plans. And may Allah humiliate them and guide them back to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu And may Allah guide them back to understanding the correct creed 
of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi and practicing it. That which comes from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah al Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, not based upon their intellect, their limited intellect. Because one of them sees like this, one of them understands like the Mu'tazila, one understands like the Jahmiyyah, another one understands like the Kulabiya, another one is, is understands like the Karamata, another one understands like the Ahbash, another one is Ashari. And all of these confused things that none of those names go back to Quran wa Sunnah al Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam or the Salaf of this Ummah, Radhi Allah Ta'ala Majma'een. But Al-Sunnah takes a, 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 the middle course, as we're going to see, and Al-Sunnah refers to themselves as Al-Sunnah. They refer to themselves as Ahl Athar. They refer to, refer to themselves as Ahl Hadith. They refer to themselves as Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. They refer to themselves as the, the Salaf Salih. They refer to themselves as Salafiyun, or Salafis, as uh, one of the names which all come from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what the early pious predecessors uh, referred to. Shaykh al-Islam mentioned another important fayda that we'll end with. He said, Fasun, uh, Qala Shaykh, Fasun, Fasunnat al-Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then Shaykh al-Islam said, Mufassaratun lil-Qur'ani mubayyinatun mubayyinatun luhu kama qala ta'ala luhu وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ ذِكْرَ لَتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nahl, uh, Shaykh al-Islam, Rahimahullah ta'ala said that the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it explains the Qur'an and it clarifies it as Allah used this same language. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Kitab Al-Kareem, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ ذِكْرَ لَتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ that we have uh, revealed unto you a dhikr. Dhikr meaning the Qur'an, the remembrance of Allah. The best remembrance is the Qur'an. The best type of dhikr comes from the Qur'an, comes from reciting kitab Allah. This is full of dhikr and full of dua and full of those things, uh, you know, this is kalam, this is this divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will bring you closer to type of ibadah by reading it. So this dhikr was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. Why? لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ In order to um, make clear for the people مَا نُزِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ what, what descended onto them. So this is what the sunnah is. The sunnah is a type of remembrance and, and it made clear for us the Qur'an. Then Shaykh al-Islam said in another one of his texts something very important. This last statement he said وَقَدْ he said, وَقَدَ تَفَقَ الصَّحَابَةُ وَتَابِعُونَ لُهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ وَصَائِرَ الْأَئِمَةِ الدِّينِ أَنَّ السُنَّةَ تُفَسِّرُ الْقُرْآنَ وَتُبَيِّنُهُ وَتَدُلُ عَلَيْهِ وَتُعَبِّرُ عَنْ مُجْمِلِهِ مُجْمِلِهِ وَأَنَّهَا تَفْسِيرٌ تُفَسِّرُ مُجْمِلَ الْقُرْآنِ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ وَالْخَبْرِ So Shaykh al-Islam, rahimahullah ta'ala said, he said that the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een, and the tabi'un, rahimahullah, those who uh, were the, the righteous, the righteous amongst them, meaning the tabi'een, tabi'een, meaning those who studied with the Sahaba, those who were true tabi'een, they were all righteous in Udul. That, and the rest of the imams of the religion, the imams like Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Ahmed, Rahimahumullah, Jami'an, that those great imams, the madhahib, the arba madhahib, and the a'imma, the imams of this religion, and the sunnah, they are in agreement that the Sunnah explains the Qur'an. So there's a consensus, ittifaq. Shaykh al-Islam said, وَقَدْ أَتَّفَقُوا وَقَدْ أَتَّفَقَ He said, it is in agreement, it is consensus from the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and the rest of the Imams of this religion that the Sunnah explains the Qur'an and clarifies it and that it is in evidence with to do that it is also uh, it is evidence of the Qur'an being practiced and that it expounds upon those things which are general 
You know, it gives the details. It details those things are general. And that it explains those things uh, which are general in the Qur'an from the commandments and from the, uh, the khabr, you know, the, it, that could mean the stories and, and all the other things that are contained in the Qur'an, uh, from, from Tawheed to the stories of the people uh, who came before us, the nations that perished before us, who followed the prophets, alayhim afdal salatu was salam from before, and the commandments of Allah. Those things which are general, the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam expounds upon it. So that's the importance of the sunnah. And I'll end with this statement of Imam Baba Hari, rahimahullah ta'ala. He said, a sunnah to, uh, he said, al-Islam, al-Islam huwa sunnah. Wa sunnah to heal Islam. He said that Islam is the sunnah, and the sunnah is Islam. Letting us know the importance that you can't divide between the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, and that that is where Ahl sunnah de derives their creed from, and that is the creed of Ahl sunnah with jama'ah, and that also shows us the methodology of Ahl sunnah with jama'ah, the minhaj, and it also expounds for us and lets us know how we understand who our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is, subhanahu, that we understand who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, and we have iman billah, which is the first pillar of iman. It comes from what? It comes from the Qur'an, what Allah describes about himself, what he affirms for himself, what he negates for himself. And it comes from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirmed for Allah and negated for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the aqeed of Ahl sunnah, and we'll continue on in our uh, next durus, and going into the treaties in more depth about those uh, those ahadith from the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, which are evidence for the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.